strength and peace. His throne established, it shall never be moved. The Lord Well, welcome here. We're glad you're joining us today, and uh, we're, we're going to have a great time of worship, and uh, I'm going to be preaching later on in the service, uh, sharing some things on marriage. But I just want to say to you that uh, I know a lot of questions are being asked, and you're getting communication now. We are going to be opening up the building on August 23rd, and uh, as you know the restrictions, there's only a certain number can be in, so we're going to need you to help us by phoning in or you know whatever me method you use to get a hold of us either online or just give it a call to the office if you don't go online and say yeah we're going to be coming how many places you're going to need we have to set up the sanctuary to hold a hundred and maybe 120 people now we can have 150 in the building but that's total with workers with some children next door uh, it's not going to be 150 of our congregation it's going to be 150 of us in total so the spaces are limited it's going to feel a little unnatural but uh, it's where we're at right now we're going to follow the protocols so uh, please do that so may I just pray as we head into the service join me father we thank you for your goodness and we pray you would bless our time together this weekend uh, bless in the worship in the prayer in the in the preaching lord help us to find life in you we pray in jesus name Amen. God bless. Have a great service.
break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down And Spirit break out Heaven come down Oh, heaven come 
the walls down Spirit break out Heaven come i uh-huh.
transition now into our time uh, where Pastor Dave will be delivering the sermon. We've had two weeks where Pastor Jory has really been confronting the idea of living differently and walking differently. And Pastor Dave will be talking about mutual submission this week as we submit ourselves one to another. And there's a verse that I really want to focus in on just in that transition point in Ephesians. It's in Ephesians chapter 5 and it's verse 1 and it says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ, he loves us. As we pray, I really want to pray into that, that we would be confronted even in our own hearts about what the Spirit would be speaking to us. How are we walking? Are we walking as dear children? Or are there those things that the Spirit has been confronting us with and we're not responding yet? So let's just pray. And I'll, I'll really believe that the Spirit will be speaking to your heart like he's speaking to mine today. Lord, we're just so thankful that we have the opportunity to say yes to your prompt. Yes, to being called into your kingdom, to accept that free gift of salvation, to become sons and daughters. And then, Lord, as over the course of our life, Lord, as you speak to us in our heart by your Holy Spirit, you just confront us with those things that are still out of step with your ways. So, God, today, even for myself and for those of your sons and daughters that would be listening today, Lord God, to the sermon we're about to hear, Lord, I just pray for a teachability for an openness, for a receptiveness to your word and to your Holy Spirit. And that, Lord, we would really be changed today as a result of it. God, we know that you take us from glory to glory. You love us so much that you take us as we are, but you love us enough to not leave us that way. You, you change us. And as we cooperate with that prompting, God, we can be changed more and more into looking like you, Lord Jesus. So I just pray for each one, God, who will commit themselves to that journey today. Lord, I'm thankful for the word that you've stirred up in Pastor Dave's heart just to challenge us in that way. And so I just pray a blessing upon the remaining uh, parts of our time today, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome you here this weekend again. We're glad that we can be with you. If you're part of our church family, a special hello to you. And you know that we're heading towards being able to open up the building. And we're working on that now, and it won't be much longer, and we'll be facing each other with some restrictions, of course, but glad to be in the same space. If you're just joining us this weekend, glad you are, and I trust that you'll get something out of what we share from God's Word today. And um, well, this is part of the series that we're doing right now called Radiant, and uh, my chunk of it is going to be chapter 5, verses 21 to 33. I'm going to be talking about marriage. So if you're a married person or you've got a family or you hope to be someday, uh, this could be something very helpful to you as we talk about marriage. All right. So if you've got something you want to read from, your Bible or electronic device, got a notepad handy, uh, let's dive in. I'm going to read this passage to you as we get started. From chapter 5, verse 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Not, it's not about women submitting to men. It's about wives and husbands. For the husband is the head of the wife as, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. The modeling is perfect here. Jesus and the church Husbands and wives, their things to be learned. Going on, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. There's a picture of the depth of that love. He actually laid down his life for us. And he's working with the church to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church. This is where the term for our series came from, radiant uh, vibrant, healthy, alive, uh, attractive, full of, full of energy, radiant. We're to be that without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm speaking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself. The wife must respect her husband. 
the words changed and developed a bit more to add to submission, it talks about respect. So we're going to unpack this, this passage that talks about marriage. Our goal in this is that we would all, all of us that are married or aspire to be married someday, that we would find out some principles that will help us have that marriage in a terrific way. Um, there's great guidance here. Uh, for years being a pastor, I've done marriage counseling out of this passage. Couples that I've married, I've done premarital counseling out of this passage. It's just full of good principle that if we can get in line with it and obey it, it will make a difference. Now this passage starts with verse 21 where it talks about us being submitted to one another out of reverence for Christ. Respect for Christ and what he is and what he's done. For based on that, it's me being in submission to people in my life. Now, whether whatever gender a person is, whatever culture we're from, whatever religious practice we follow, no human being has an easy time submitting to another. A lot of us have a picture in our mind, maybe something going back to the school grounds, where somebody stronger would get you down at recess and bend your arm behind your back and make you say uncle, uh, that they think that's what submission is. Well, it's not that at all. UFC, uh, the fighting series for years, there's a lot of those guys have submission holds where they'll bend somebody's arm in an unnatural way or their leg or something, and uh, they have to tap out. It's submission. That's not what this is about. This is giving somebody else a place of influence in your life because you care for them and they care for you. Now, we need some clarity in what we're going to share. These directives from God are given... Because the, if these things were automatic, if I automatically loved the way I should, or if I automatically respected the way I should, he wouldn't have to tell me to do it. But these things are not automatic. They're part of our choices that we make. We can choose to be obedient or we can choose not to. It's up to us to do it. Human moral choice is a big deal. And so when God is giving us a teaching, it's best for us if we're in obedience to it. Uh, God has given us these particular commands because, in actual fact, uh, husbands aren't loving the way they should in many cases, and wives are not respecting and sub submitting and walking in harmony with their husbands as they should. Even though we're part of a Christian movement, doesn't mean we're perfect, and there's much that we could do to do better. When the husband's having a spiritual struggle, the way it will manifest itself in the marriage sometimes is that he will withdraw from the relationship. He's there, but he's not there. He's present, but he seems like he's absent. The communication is limited and not effective and not meaningful. Uh, as men, we can, be, we can drift into being self-centered and selfish. We can actually step back from our leadership. That's how we react when we're not spiritually healthy in marriage those kind of things show up. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And for the wife, sometimes what happens when they are spiritually not in a healthy spot, maybe it's their insecurities, but they, they begin to kind of reach in and take control, uh, begin to have kind of a wrestling match with their husband about uh, headship in the home. We're going to talk about that. But those things are happening. That's why God says, listen, I'm going to show you a way to do it that's going to actually work better. It'll be our choice to obey. And again, we're not, we're not saying this is going to make a, a overnight a, a perfect marriage, but it will make it better. That's the beautiful part. So let's talk to the husbands first of all. Let's talk to the guys. God is commanding a wife to submit to a husband. But in the model of that, in, the, in this context, he's saying this husband is going to be loving and self-sacrificing for his wife and is going to live out his life to help her life be better. That's the kind of husband he's saying, wives, submit to that. The husband is to be like Christ. The example given in the passage is Jesus and the church, husbands and wives. Jesus loved the church, gave himself for the church. He sacrificed himself for us. He actually died for us. That's how much he loved us. Um, and he, he makes sure that we know that. He communicates that to us. He lets us know that we're loved. Uh, he's made the ultimate sacrifice and now communicates that to us on a, on a regular basis. And something else that Jesus does for all of us that are Christians, men or women, 
He invests himself in us to help us be healthy and strong and vibrant and to live a good life. If you want to know why is it a good idea to be a Christian, well, one of the, ways, one of the reasons is it, makes you have a healthy, it helps you have a healthy life, a full life, uh, a vibrant person, a radiant person. That's the purpose of Jesus in us. So as husbands, I said, we, we struggle uh, with drifting into being selfish. If we, we should be loving and self-sacrificing, but we, we instead turn towards being self-centered. And because we're damaged goods from the fall and from our own sin, sometimes we have issues with insecurity. Uh, we're, we're not sure of who we are, we're not confident, and that causes us to act in a certain way. And also, it, there's times when we are very influenced by the, the dark voices in the culture around us, whether it's through movies or whatever, telling men, this is how you should be a man, or this is how you should be a husband. And they're just not good advice at all. In fact, they go counter to what God would say just about 100%. Uh, if we ask husbands, if we surveyed all the men watching this morning who were or this, or this weekend and said, are you, do you love your wife? If you're a married man, do you love your wife? They would say, well, sure, of course I do. And I'm sure they probably do. But here's a little thought for you. It comes out of the Bible. Love withheld is more damaging than an open rebuke. So husbands, if, if we say that we love our wives, do they know that? Do they know that by our words? Do they know that by our actions? Um, I love Western movies. I have three Western movies that kind of rank at the top of my list. Uh, Tombstone, uh, the outlaw Josie Wells, I love that one. You know, he's, he's that Clint Eastwood guy, you know, he's, he's shooting up the, the bad guys and um, he has that one phrase he fires out there, are you going to pull those pistols or whistle Dixie? I love that line. <laughs> so I'm a Western movie guy, but another movie that I really like is called Open Range. It stars Robert Duvall, uh, Kevin Costner, and Annette uh, Benning. And uh, in the movie, it's, it's a great movie, it's a great story, there's romance in the movie, but there's gunfights, there's good guys and bad guys, and it's, there's some violence for sure, but it's, it's a great Western story, kind of set in, it's actually filmed down in southern Alberta on the Stony Reserve, it's a beautiful part of the country, and it, it, you'll see in the movie, it's some great scenery. So in the movie, Kevin Costner kind of falls for this lady, uh, Annette Benning, and he thinks that she's married, so then he backs off, but then he finds out she, that guy that she think, he thinks she's married to, just her brother, and so he becomes interested. It looks like they're going to have something going on, and then he's a troubled soul. He's been a killer, and he runs away and leaves, leaves town sort of thing, just runs off, but just days later, she's in her garden working. He comes back, and he's been shot in the leg, so he's limping, and, you know, a typical good Western hero doesn't let a bullet slow him down, and... Uh, he comes to her and uh, said, I couldn't live without you. I had to come back. And he said, will you marry me? And she said, yes, I'll marry you. And then he said, may I kiss you? And she said, yes, you can kiss me. And they have this wonderful affectionate kiss. And it's really special and it's long and it's all that good stuff. And, and then they, their faces separate. And he says to her, he says, I'm going to give you a thousand of those. Uh, and she said, I'll make sure you do. So he was saying to her, I'm going to keep communicating my love to you. Husbands, are we communicating our love to our wives? Do we keep showing them? Now, one of the other, the other side of this in my life as a pastor in Edmonton, I had a couple in our church that were having a hard time, and uh, their marriage was on really shaky ground, so I was doing some counseling with them. And the, the scenario was kind of like this. She was a stay-at-home mom with, with some kids. They're all little, and her life was hectic. And he was a jock. He was a very athletic guy, big strapping guy. And he loved hockey. And he loved playing hockey. He loved watching hockey. He loved going to hockey games and all that stuff. He'd go out with the boys and have a hockey night watching on TV somewhere. And leaving her at home with the kids. And, and she's not a happy girl. And for just reason. So I'm trying to get him to understand that there's this problem and he's missing it. And finally, in frustration, I said, listen, um, if, if someone uh, uh, broke into your home and they were going to do violence and they're, they're really dangerous, uh, would, you, would you protect your wife? And he said, well, yeah, of course I would. 
I said, well, if a guy had a knife or a gun and he was coming at, at her in a very threatening way, would you, would you intervene? Would you jump in between? And he said, yes, of course I would. And I'm thinking, yeah, he's a big guy. He'd probably do just fine. But I said, so if the guy, you know, was going to, you know, strike your wife and you, you might have to take a knife or even be shot, would you still jump in between? And he said, yes, I would. So I said, you would, you'd, get, you'd lay down your life for your wife. He said, yes, I would. So I said, you would die for your wife just driving it home. And he said, yes, I would. He's getting kind of passionate. I said, okay, give up hockey. And the room got really quiet. He's ready to die for her, but he won't give up something for her, no sacrifice. Um, I think it's obvious when the, the experts kind of look at women, one of the great needs that they have, what a wife was looking to her husband for is safety and security. Um, that love and sacrifice, that communicated love would give that to her. She'd feel safe and secure in that relationship. I know in my home for years, I was an angry, impatient man. Always, you know, my temper was kind of always on the surface and I'm always in a hurry and kind of push, push, push. And, and it, my wife didn't feel secure with either my anger, which wasn't even directed towards her, but just the fact that I get angry would, would upset her and unsettle her and my impatience uh, was devaluing, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I did that, but I did. So husbands, our job is to help our wives to feel very secure. And as a Christian with Jesus, do I feel secure with him? Yes. He's, he's my protector. He watches over me. I, I feel safe with him. It's all good. Now I want to talk to the wives. It says the wife is to choose to submit to the husband. The wife is to allow the husband to be a leader, to be a head within the home. Now, please understand, again, biblical understanding of leadership and headship in this terminology is not like the word boss. It's not dictatorship. It's leadership. It's not uh, a bully. It's tenderness. Jesus was never a bully to the church. He never has been a bully to any of us. So men, when we talk about being the way we should be with our wives, we are to be tender-hearted like that. But then the wife has the choice to make, will I allow this person space to be a leader within my, home, within my life and even in our home? Um, again, the spiritual struggle in the wife can be, it end up being a wrestling match for headship within the home. When women are asked to respect and to submit, that can be hard to do because they may see flaws in their husband. Uh, they may have insecurity themselves. They may be trying to get their life in order and get everything organized the way they like. Uh, that can be a challenge for them. It can be disturbing that if they see mistakes in the husband, he makes bad decisions, then they start to pull back and begin to reach in and take control again. So it's a tricky thing. It's a two-way thing. But there can be a struggle for control. Now, I know that some say the wife should always be in submission, even if the guy's a terrible bully or a, a real monster of a guy. Uh, but that's not the context here. There's a two-way journey here. The husband is to be loving and sacrificing. The wife is to be giving respect and honor and submission to her husband. And those two things, if they're, if that's a... Going back and forth, it just makes things healthier and healthier and healthier. So wives, I want to say this to you. you. You have the opportunity to make your husbands a better leader. You can actually give power to them and let them lead and let them grow in that leadership. As I said, not men or women, none of us are perfect. And so we may struggle with leadership. And women have that power, that potential to help that grow. A woman has need of being secure and safe and, and feel like she's being nurtured and helped to be the best woman she can be. On a man's side, there's a desire to be significant. A man wants to be something of value. He knows he has responsibilities for leadership. He may struggle with those. Sometimes men have not that, had that modeled in their home before this, so they're kind of on their own with this, trying to figure this out. 
I find it interesting. Some men are great leaders in business and in the, in the community, uh, in sports or whatever, but sometimes they struggle with being a leader in their home, especially when it comes to emotional things and spiritual things. Sometimes they're very handicapped with that, and they need someone to help them pick that up. Years ago when I was in uh, Edmonton running Teen Time, um, it was a really great job, but it was very, very, very hard work. I put in tons of hours, uh, would often have six, seven days a week being busy at work, and uh, we had a ranch that was being had to look after, and there were big financial pressures. We had a bus ministry that was picking up kids, and we had big weekend programs for kids, and uh, it, was, it was hard work, but I loved it. And I'd often get home late at night, and... Uh, Sometimes I'd just be sort of drained and I'd, Pat and the kids would be in bed and I had this practice in my life that I'd come in and I would get a can of cold pork and beans and about three or four slices of bread with lots of butter or margarine on them and I'd sit down in front of the television set in a chair and just kind of channel surf while I ate my beans and ate my bread. <laughs> and, you know, I can't say it was a very good dietary practice, but... So one night I sat down to watch my TV and do what I was going to do, and I noticed there's a piece of paper stuck on the TV screen right on the screen. And you've got to understand, I've come home and I am weary in my work. I'm tired, and my leadership is feeling kind of at a, maybe at a tough point. And so I, I'm sitting down, and here's this note. So I get up, and I walk over to the TV, and I take this note off the TV, it says on the note, it says something like this. Pat says, I love you, and I'm proud of what you do. And I got to tell you, as tired as I was, I felt uh, an energy go through me that just encouraged me. And uh, she gave me strength. She helped me as a leader be that leader. Now, it wasn't in the home per se, but it's that kind of thing ladies that really being asked you when it talks about submission and respect it's like you're giving something to a man that actually lifts him up and makes him stronger it's interesting on both the male and female side if a, if a husband wants a, a, a loving and beautiful and happy and well adjusted wife he can help that happen or he can make it impossible and the same is true on the female side. If a woman wants a strong leader and a, and a healthy, godly man in her life, she can actually help him get there. Or the, she can create the opposite. And uh, really, you'd wonder why we would ever choose to do that. So the answer for men and women, uh, for husbands and wives, is a simple concept. Out of reverence and respect for Christ, we need to take what he, what's being said to us as his teaching and take it to heart and bring it into a place of obedience in our life. The context of this whole uh, teaching on marriage is based on the relationship between, between Jesus Christ, our Savior, and us as Christians, the church. And we are to live our lives in relationship similar to what we see him living like as he works with us. He's our example of love and in submission. In the Garden of Gethsemane, before he was crucified, it says that he, he said to his Father, the Father in heaven, he said, not my will, but yours be done. He submitted himself to the Father for our sake. He was obedient to the Father for our sake. There's the submission example. And the fact that, that he loved us, he loved us so much, he died for us. That's the beauty of it. If you're not a follower of Christ today and you wonder, how does this all work? Well, that's how it works. Someone took your place, paid for your sin. He did it because he loves you. He sacrificed himself for you. And now his hope and his plan for you is for him to invest his love into your life on a daily basis and cause you to be healthy, to be a radiant person. So in marriage, how do we do this? We obey this teaching. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We submit ourselves to him and we find life. We bring these principles into our marriage. 
we find life. Now, I'd like to pray with you as we close. And uh, I want to just say that I uh, appreciate you. And uh, if you're a married person, I know for some they've found the COVID has actually been a challenge to marriage. For some, they found it a neat time to get deeperly more connected. Uh, wherever you're at in this journey, whether your marriage is still thriving or whether you feel under some pressure, I encourage you to take the teaching to heart. But may I just pray for you and just pray for mar our marriages as we close today. So if you just join me. Lord, I thank you for the men and women who are watching this today and who are thinking through maybe their marriage relationship, maybe they're sitting together on a Chesterfield, maybe they're grinning at each other, or maybe they're, they just moved a little further apart, I'm not sure. But Lord, wherever we're at in our relationships, and we're all a work in progress, it's always a growing, changing thing. So Father, I just pray for marriages. I pray you'd protect marriages. I pray you would bless marriages. I know there's some people that we're watching today that have just become married. So we've got some newlyweds in our church family. And for these who are just beginning their journey, uh, Lord, uh, thinking about how they adjust to each other, may they take this to heart and realize this is really how it works if we just obey this teaching. So God, bless our families, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.